but it feels more to me like a an Avalon Hill style D-Day or Waterloo or you know, but modernized version of that with chip pull. And I'll, let me just uh, explain a little bit about that. Right, so we're back. I uh, had to stop there and I thought I'd change cameras so we can have a chat. And why are we, looks like we're zoomed in here. Maybe I need to sit this sucker back a little bit. There we go. You can look at the rags up on the roof. I don't know. Sit still. So uh, I, was, I was saying that it felt like a, a D-Day or... Um, Waterloo or Africa Corps or something like that, but modernized and, and more interesting. Uh, because it plays fast and it's fun, but I don't think you should have the expectation that this is going to be the Desert Fox or, you know, the campaign for North Africa or, uh, you know, DAC or DAC2 or anything like that. It's not that level of detail. You're, like I said, there's a lot of abstraction in this game and it's not bad. It's just, that's what it is. And I saw actually a game on con in, um, Seattle that they, they set up and tore down a scenario in about four, I would say 40 minutes to an hour. It was only a three or four turn thing, but they cranked through it all. That's kind of working it out as they went along. They were, I think they were actually punching, punching counters as they went along. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look at the photographs from the con to be certain of that. So what it does do, so it's not so abstract that it's just any generic game. What it does do is layer in some gameplay mechanics that represent some of the specialties of each side. So you've got the ability, I'm going to just look at the rules here so I try not to miss too much, yeah. Uh, there's some German inf infiltration capabilities. Obviously there are forts in this as well. There's the Allied Assault Doctrine, which allows them to use a different CRT. It's a little more bloody. You know, Monty was pretty free and liberal with his men. So there's that. <clears throat> there's a, a resilience uh, capability that the, uh, the Germans receive mainly because they have a capability there to, they, they did a lot better job of recovering uh, forces uh, from the battlefield, uh, tanks and things like that. Um, and then of course, then you got the whole Panzer Doctrine thing where you've got uh, momentum, Panzer Superiority and Panzer Shock. So it's got three elements there and they tend to start really piling up the, the value add and when, when the Panzers come here, if the, in this particular scenario I was playing, you see that, you know, ha having them doubled and then get a DRM and then potentially get another move, half move, something like that with the potential with the additional combat. Is that right? After German player completes activities, may perform a section, a second action. And then depending on what action they originally did, they could combat combat minus one DRM. If they combated, they could move or half move. That's pretty powerful stuff. And it, so that's why uh, trying to hold to Brook and let it be siege, bad idea. You need to run. As soon as those Germans hit the board, you need to book it back, I don't know, to Solom or Badi or, or somewhere there along the next escarpment line, buy some time probably, and then get some reinforcements coming into the board. So I liked, I, so I like some of that sort of uh, fluid, well, the fluidity of the game is great, but then also just how they're trying to model some of the unique aspects of the game. You've got to do the rail, rail lines and finish the roads around to Brook and all that sort of fun stuff. All pretty straightforward stuff. So plays super quick, plays well. Uh, is it gonna be my go-to game? No. Uh, but it is going to be a game that I would use if I uh, were trying to introduce someone into wargaming to whet their appetite. If they had an interest in the African campaign and wanted to understand a little, little bit more about it, this actually is a, a quite a good introductory game. Now, it's not Root, right? It's not a Euro. It's not a war game dressed up as a Euro. It's a war game. So let's don't get me wrong there, uh, but it is, it's 
it plays fast, which I think that's you know part of the, the challenge we have with a lot of war games is they take too long to play. You can play a very short scenario here and then keep going if you wish and get a great experience out of it and then kind of go forward from there. And I think this would engage people's interest because it's a very attractive map. The components are very attractive. I really like the colors on the box. I don't like the big black band across the box and you know, kind of the, you know, let's slap a picture of Rommel on the cover type of thing. But overall, it's a very visually appealing and accessible game. I. And so I'll say that, so that we could end this conversation right there. I will just make one other point that the, you know, the, these gaps in the maps are very straightforward to work out. It's a simple mechanic to allow uh, this thing not to be five maps wide uh, and, and it works very well and you will not be uh, pushed out of your immersion in the game by it. So there you go. All right, that's all I had to say about this. Quick look at it. And we'll definitely be setting it up again soon. I imagine it is selling well. Uh, Ted has done a good job at serving uh, some of the errata up already. But people have found little niggles here and there. Most of them are clarifications. So that's nice to see there's not huge issues with the rules so far. I imagine once you get deeper into the campaign play that we'll, we may find some oddities, but who knows? With chip pull, I would say for find an oddity, pack it up, start again, or start from rewind it. Right? I take a picture of the map at every end of every turn, and with a, with counter density like this, like it's easy for me to rewind and go. Well, I kind of screwed that up. Let's let's redo that turn, put all the chips back in the cup, start pulling, and see what happens. Different. Just a little tip for you guys who are playing solo. All right, I got to uh, I got to roll. I got to go catch a plane. So let's go do that. Talk to you soon.